Okay, so what we're going to do today is talk about uh, derivatives. Uh, derivatives, uh, particularly um, with respect to uh, um, operating multinational corporations. So, um, in, in respect to international finance, uh, what sort of derivatives do we need uh, or, or do we often use uh, and why? Um, we'll keep this short, uh, so we'll probably talk about futures uh, and then options at a later date and then a little bit about swaps. Uh, so, I will focus on uh, futures and um, uh, forwards at this point. So the idea is, well, we're going to talk about derivatives. So so the idea of, of derivatives is, uh, in the past, we've had uh, uh, fixed exchange rate systems. So prior to 1973, you know, we were on sort of a quasi-fixed exchange rate system, as, as, we, as we've talked about. Uh, under a fixed exchange rate system, uh, multinational corporations don't have to worry necessarily about exchange rate risk. Or, let's say, they don't have to worry about exchange rate risk over short periods of time. But, uh, of course, even under a fixed exchange rate regime over a long period of time, the, the re regime may break so that you do have to you know, worry about it over maybe a 10-year period. But uh, in a fixed exchange rate system like we have with the gold standard, you don't, multinational corporations don't have currency uh, exchange rate risk over the short term. Uh, so derivatives aren't that necessary. However, uh, once we allow floating exchange rates, once we allow exchange rates to fluctuate around um, currency, uh, exchange rates to be market determined, uh, corporations are faced with currency risk. Uh, therefore, uh, what they need or, or what they may want are, are ways to mitigate that risk over certain periods of time. So that's where derivatives are, are going to come in. So this is why, a little bit historically, why derivatives are, let's say, uh, very often used now, they weren't used in the past. Now that we have a floating exchange rate system, what derivatives are going to allow us to do is choose whether we want to fix our exchange rate over certain periods of time. So we can have floating. We can choose to, to operate in a floating exchange rate environment where if I need 200,000 euros every month, I can just purchase those 200,000 euros in the spot market every, um, uh, every month, and I'll never know exactly how many dollars, uh, how many dollars I'll need or we can hedge this uh, in the foreign exchange market by buying 200,000 euros. I could buy um, 200,000 euros, a strip of them, uh, uh, for delivery this month, next month, the following month, and so forth. So this is going to give me absolute certainty as to um, uh, what, uh, how many dollars I'll need to, to, to buy this, um, uh, to buy the 200,000 euros. So uh, the derivatives are going to give us the flexibility to, to hedge, to give us sort of switch ourselves to a fixed exchange rate system over certain periods of time. Of course, what we're going to talk about a little bit is uh, uh, derivative markets, and we'll talk about why only exist, um, we can only really hedge out one year. Derivative markets don't really, you can't really hedge out past one year. But this is somewhat similar to a fixed exchange rate system where I'm sure uh, it'll stay fixed over a short period of time, but uh, when it gets longer, everything is really a floating exchange rate system, even if you're using derivatives or, or under a fixed exchange rate system. So, um, uh, and because some of, some of you have had investments and, and, and some of you haven't, uh, 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 we're going to talk about this in sort of a, a multinational standpoint, so less involved. However, uh, derivatives simply, this is, uh, while there's a lot of calculus in derivatives, it means uh, um, these are going to be contracts which derive their value from something else. The something else in this case will be uh, currency, the spot exchange rate. So there's something else here is a spot exchange rate. But we can make derivatives um, with respect to anything really. Uh, we, could, we could create a derivative that says, okay, uh, in the next minute, if 30 cars pass on that road uh, outside, I'll give you $5. If less than 30 pass on the road, you give me $2. So that's a derivative uh, where the underlying is the amount of cars that pass by. So. Um, uh, derivative is simply something that derives its value from the behavior of something else. They're also commonly called contingent claims. So it's a claim contingent on how many cars pass by that road. Uh, in this case, however, uh, everything is going to derive its value from the spot, uh, the spot rate, spot foreign, ex uh, spot, uh, foreign exchange rate. So first we have uh, forward slash futures. I'm going to talk about this generally um, and then speak about a little bit about the distinction between forwards and futures. Uh, but uh, generally, you know, well, these are going to be used in very similar circumstances, albeit maybe by um, different size corporations. 
So the idea of this is, um, it's an, uh, uh, and I'll define this a little bit more in, in a forward at this point, but it's an agreement to exchange a set amount of currency at some set day, at some set date. Uh, so an idea, an example of a forward, uh, simply could be, um, it's, it's, um, it's March now, so we could sit there and say, okay, um, on uh, April 1st, uh, I'll exchange, let's say, $200 for 100 pounds. This is uh, um, a very simple you know, example of, uh, of, a, uh, of a forward contract. So on some set date, on April 1st, I'll um, give you $200 for 100 pounds. Now, of course, what this implies is, um, you know, this whole thing implies uh, a forward exchange rate. So that implies the exchange rate on that particular day is going to be $2 per pound. So I'm going to give $200 for 100 pounds. So the foreign exchange rate is uh, um, uh, the forward rate is $2 per pound. So uh, how this might you know be quoted more often is uh, I'm going to buy 100 pounds at $2 per pound on April 1st. On April 1st, um, the idea here is so an, an alternative way of stating the the same exact thing is I'm going to buy um, 100 pounds uh, at Two dollars per pound on April first. So same exact way of saying uh, way of saying the same thing. Uh, but the idea is I'm just going to set exchange some set amount of dollars for a set amount of pounds, which determines the forward exchange rate on April first. So this is a forward contract. Very simple, very natural. Something that uh, would come up uh, quite a bit uh, through the course of your business. Now, while we're talking about that, the idea is. Um, when, you know, just taking this simple example before we move on, when might we want to use this? So when would it, uh, when in the course of our business would we want to buy $100 um, uh, in the future? Uh, so the idea here is, and these are exact exam questions, um, what sort, so I, I would, you know, an exact exam question is I'm going to say, uh, uh, you're, this, is, this is your business, this is, this is what, you're, what you'll need, um, or should you buy or sell pounds for? So the idea here is, a situation where you'd want to buy this is uh, I import um, uh, I import from England, so I, I import something, and what I'm importing is invoiced in pounds. So in other words, I might need I buy let's what could we I'm just going to say car parts. Um, I import car parts, a hundred thousand pounds worth of car parts um, every month from England. Uh, so what I need and it's invoiced in pounds. So what I'm going to have to do is deliver one hundred thousand pounds. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to have to deliver one hundred thousand pounds. So, um, every month. So what this means is, when you, when you think about this, think of through the course of my business. If I, if I pay per month, think about, am I long or short the pound? So this is through the course of my business. This is my business. Through operating my business, I pay 100,000 pounds per month. Um, so, now, we use the term long or short in finance. One thing to keep in mind is I use the term long if I make, um, if I profit when, when, when it goes up. So if I'm long IBM, I make money when IBM goes up. And I'm sh if I'm short IBM, I make money when IBM goes down. We use the term long and short because sometimes you can get into a complicated trade uh, with options and other derivatives. And, and it, you might want to say, well, net when all these net out, I'm net long or I'm net short. Um, uh, this underline. So the idea through the course of my business if I have to pay 100,000 per month, if I'm importing, am I long or short the pound? And the idea here is, um, if I do this, I'm short the pound. Uh, as the pound goes down, it becomes easier and easier and easier. It takes fewer and fewer dollars to buy that 100,000. So through the course here, I am short pound, through the course of my business. So if I want to uh, get rid of it now, what this means is, if the pound goes up in value, I'll lose money, because it takes more and more and more uh, US dollars to buy, to buy a pound. 
So uh, if through the course of my business I'm short pounds, what I would want to do is buy pounds forward. So this is this is uh, this is long the pound. Obviously, if I, the pound goes up, uh, I make money. If I if I'm if if it's two dollars per pound. So considering the forward contract here, if it's two dollars per pound, and the pound goes up to two dollars and. and and 10 cents per pound, which, which, which would be the pound going up, then I'm very happy that I can buy it at $2 per pound instead of at the new spot market rate of $2.10. So I make money on this if the pound goes up in value. I um, make money here if the pound goes down in value. So if through the course of my business I'm short, I'll go long uh, a, a, a forward contract in the pound. These two uh, risks offset and I'm hedged. So now um, I don't care, you know, of course these numbers are different, but, uh, um, but uh, if I'm, if I'm sort of short 100,000 pounds here and I long 100,000 pounds here, um, my risk's offset. So in any exam question, just think through the course of my business, am I, am I long or short? Uh, of course, an example of me being long euros would be, I, easy example, I export to Europe uh, and they pay me in euros. So I'm going to get you know, uh, 50,000 euros every month, hence I'm long euros. If the value of the euro goes up, that 50,000 trans, trans uh, um, uh, that gets transformed into more U.S. dollars at that 50,000. Um, if the euro goes down, that 50,000 is, is um, uh, means fewer dollars to me. So uh, just think whether I'm long or short in the course of my business. Good. So this is a uh, long um, uh, forward contract. We bought the bought the pound forward. Uh, good. Now. Of course, uh, an example of short, you know, a short forward contract would be, um, of course, I'm exchanging, uh, in this case, I want to exchange pounds for dollars, but I, I, you know, all I'm doing is I sell. So in this case, I deliver uh, one, 100 pounds at $2 per pound, and this is a, this is a short contract. Um, so of course, I could buy and sell uh, pounds forward. Now, the idea here is, in which I sort of left unspecified, and becomes more important when I talk about options, is that, what this, you know, maybe in full should say, no matter what happens in the world, I will sell, if I'm, you know, if I enter this contract, I will sell 100 pounds at $2, so I will get $200 per pound. I'm going to deliver 100 pounds, I'm going to get $200. That will happen no matter what happens in the world. This is going to be different than options. Options, we're going to say, if something occurs, then I'll transact. If something occurs, I won't transact. But this says, no matter what happens, I will transact. You could get out of this contract beforehand. You could you could say, well, I'll enter into this contract, you know, to uh, today. Tomorrow, I realize I, I don't, uh, I'm not going to receive the pounds, so I, I I shouldn't be in this contract, and I'll buy 100 pounds at some forward rate that exists um, tomorrow. So of course, this forward rate might be uh, two dollars and one cent per pound. Of course, if you know, I entered in this at at you know, t you know time time zero, and then a day later, time one, I realize I don't need it. Well, then I, I just buy 100 um, pounds at whatever the rate is. So this could be, you know, 2.01 um, dollars per pound uh, on four one. So I just enter into an offsetting contract. Of course, the idea here is now um, on, I've bought every, those 100 pounds uh, at for a cent higher than um, I have uh, uh, sold those 100 pounds, so I'm going to lose money. So in other words, I bought 100 pounds at two dollars. I sold, I bought 100 pounds. Uh, sorry, two dollars and one cent. I sold 100 pounds at uh, two dollars, so I lose one cent per 100 pounds. Uh, so I lose a dollar, right? So I can get out of a, a Ford uh, contract at any time. I will, um, I will, however, realize a gain or loss, mostly. All right, so. Uh, these are uh, simple forward contracts. Uh, now, to talk about the distinction between forwards and futures. The idea of a forward is if you, if you take a look at this, it's just to, to exchange some set amount uh, at some set date. And the idea of this is they're perfectly, they're, they're customizable uh, to a large extent. So the way a forward works is, is I might be, well, um, the first thing to look at is because it's, can be tailored to the particular instance. There's, it's not a very, it's not very liquid. So in other words, if I need fifty thousand uh, dollars at, you know, the, the on on May fifth, 
uh, I have to find somebody else if, if I want to, well, if I want to, let's say I want to buy 50,000 pounds on May 5th, I have to find somebody who wants to sell me 50,000 pounds on May 5th for a particular uh, forward rate. So these can be, the idea is, if we standardize them in some way, uh, and change this from some, you know, somehow solidify this agreement, uh, we're, we're going to create futures and we're going to create more trading. So we're going to create more trading in this, um, and then this is the distinction between forward and futures. So the idea here is, um, uh, this is going to be uh, not, a futures contract as opposed to a forward is not customizable. A futures contract is going to be for a specific amount of currency. So. Uh, I think the big, the big British pound contract is 62,500 British pounds. So uh, and when we talk about a futures contract as opposed to forward, it's going to be for a specific um, amount of currency. And you can only trade in 62,500 or, or, or two times that or three times that or four times that, but you can't trade 70,000 pounds in the futures. Also, it's going to be uh, for delivery on some set date. Uh, meaning, I mean, it's going to be, uh, a futures is going to be for delivery on a specific date. Uh, uh, and you can look at contract specifications on something like the CME for, for different uh, futures contracts, but they're going to be maybe something like uh, the third Friday of every month. So, in other words, I can only trade um, uh, for a delivery date of the third Sunday of every month or every other month. So, what you can think of as futures are standardized forward contracts. And once you standardize them, um, you can get, uh, it lends itself to, 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 uh, to trading on an exchange, uh, which is going to generate more trading. The big, the big other distinction between these two is just what I said in terms of uh, the market structure, or futures are traded on an exchange and forwards are going to be traded in, 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 in an over-the-counter interbank market. Now, the distinction there is, is, is important. So uh, when, we talk about, when we talk about a forward market, what we, we generally have, um, because if you haven't guessed it now, if you're going to bother to